everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, today we're doing an exciting update on my beautiful fringe leaf frogs. These are the Cruzio Hyla Craspidopus. Now, if you recall, my good friends Alec, Mike, and I went on a little reptile road trip to not only pick up my new male black-breasted leaf turtle, who I've yet to introduce to you guys, and to go visit Savannah, who is interesting enough, one of the only people in Canada, if not even North America, who is successfully breeding the fringe leaf frog, a absolutely gorgeous and stunning species of frog native to different parts of South America. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I would like to strongly recommend that you watch it before proceeding with this update. Her story of how they successfully are producing these animals is very interesting and it's cool to see their whole setup because what we're gonna be doing today is showing you all how my tadpoles that I took home at the end of that video have progressed, metamorphosed, and become beautiful frogs. How my experience has been keeping and raising these animals. They're doing fantastic. I want you guys to experience that. I want you to get to see what happened there. So truly, if you didn't see that video, watch it first and then join us back here for this video so that you can see how my animals are doing. Awesome. So friends, assuming we've all watched that video now, you'll recall that I took home four tadpoles. Three of them already had developed back legs and the fourth was quite small because Savannah wanted me to at least be able to raise one from a younger age. Now, originally I had this idea that I was gonna set up a large container with aquatic plants and a bubbler, but now three out of my four tadpoles are going to be frogs within days. So having seen that she was keeping so many of her tadpoles in containers like this, I decided to sort of follow the same method. I set up a small container with some frog bit and floating plants that would hopefully help maintain and store some of those harmful nutrients. And I began to gently place my nearly fully developed froglets into that container. Now you'll notice that the water in the bin is an off yellow coloration and this is due to the fact that there are many tannins present in that water. What I did is inoculate the water with the tadpole's microbiome by asking Savannah for some of their old water. This would be to reduce the amount of transfer shock that the tadpoles would potentially experience in their new environment. Other than that, it's a bit of reverse osmosis water and spring water to ensure that there were some minerals present in their new habitat. Now, as I mentioned before, Savannah did want to give me a smaller tadpole so that I had the opportunity to actually raise one for a longer period of time. What's interesting is that this tadpole is actually a younger sibling of the other three. That's right, the adult frogs produced a clutch more recently and this tadpole is from that second spawn. Now, I've always known tadpoles to be pretty stationary unless food is involved. And one of the things I noticed right away through keeping these lovely animals is how active Cruzio Hyla tadpoles tend to be. They always seem so restless and are constantly on the move whether or not food is involved. It should be noted that keeping a species of tree frog that so few hobbyists have had the opportunity to work with was sort of nerve wracking because most of the animals in the hobby were farmed and imported from Peru, not captive bred. So very few people have had the experience of raising these animals from tadpoles, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this to share and document with you what I've been doing so far. Boy was I in for a surprise when the next morning, I kid you not, one of my tadpoles had developed front arms. That's right. Overnight, my tadpole that only had back legs now had front arms and was thinking about climbing out of the water. One to two days later, that froglet was already climbing up the side of the enclosure. It's important to note that the enclosure was sealed with a lid and air holes, so the frog wouldn't have left and disappeared and dried up in my room. I also added a piece of floating cork bark and some pothos cuttings to ensure that there was no risk of drowning for those newly developed froglets. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda stressed out at this point because I thought I had maybe a few weeks before I'd have to think about where I was gonna have these froglets. Again, I went there expecting to take home four tadpoles that were the size of that last one, not three that would be froglets within a day. 
So I quickly got to work setting up a 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra that would house all three froglets and their younger tadpole sibling. Let's have a look. Now for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what is your favorite species of amphibian and why? There are so many incredible amphibians on our planet and they come in such a diverse array of color and morphology and oh, where do I even end with this? Frogs, toads, Sicilians, newt, salamanders, they are an incredible group of animals. For me, I couldn't even put it down to one thing, but if you have an idea what your favorite amphibian is in the world, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear about it. As always, I'll give you a comment a heart, and we can hopefully engage in a little bit of a conversation. Welcome to my Cruziohyla craspidopus grow out tank. This is a 12 by 12 by 18 inch exoterra enclosure with a custom made background that I used to house my Fantasticus in and I gotta say, it's growing in so well and the froglets are doing fantastic. The enclosure contains several different plant cuttings, everything from golden pothos to a few monstera adansoni cuttings. I also put some duckweed and frog bit in the water. I have an air pump with an air stone running in the enclosure for about 12 hours a day to help oxygenate keep the water clean. The enclosure gets a bit of warmth and light from an Arcadia 6% UVB bulb, which the frogs actually bask under regularly during the day, as well as a sun blaster. You'll see that I've saran wrapped three quarters of the lid space and left a little bit of a gap for UVB penetration and airflow. Now, although my three oldest tadpoles were raised to froglet size in this container, I made the decision to raise the youngest tadpole in that enclosure with them. That way we would benefit from the air stone, live plants and more. For raising tadpoles, I fed them regularly with two types of fish food pellet. I fed them the omega-1, which was a high protein quality pellet food. And I also fed them the Aquion tropical granules because this food specifically contains spirulina, which is a really important ingredient you want to have in your tadpole food. Although I have to acknowledge I have had a few scares and have been watching these little guys like hawks out of being nervous for their well-being, having the opportunity to raise my Cruziohyla craspidopus from tadpoles has actually been quite an intimate experience. You have these tiny little fish-like creatures that you nurture and tend to that slowly but surely become these beautiful frogs. It's a very cool experience to have the privilege to partake in. Okay everybody, so here we are in the Cruziohyla craspidopus enclosure. Here is one of the froglets. And this is the one that we were just looking at. Within, I swear, the span of two or three days, this froglet developed its front arms. And as you can see very, very quickly, the tail is absorbed. So that last tadpole is officially a froglet. Just like that, it happens that fast. Isn't that incredible? Now, as you can see, here are the other froglets. This is one of them. And uh, the other two are one of them is up here, and the other one is over here. So what we're gonna do is take the good old veteran camera and do a night vision feeding video and see if we can watch these guys hunt a few crickets in the dark. I don't think we can use my headlamp and get them to eat, it's just too bright. They're probably gonna be too shy to eat. So if we switch things into complete darkness, we have a chance, so let's see what happens. All right, everyone, here we go. Headlamps coming off, night vision's coming on. It's getting into focus. Let's start tossing some Jiminy's in there. Now watch closely and see if you notice any of the frogs hunting or catching any crickets. About to have our first meal. Oh, almost. <laughs> Good attempt, little one. This guy's like ready for action. I think we need to just watch him for a bit. Now, keep in mind, this isn't easy because literally the only thing I can see is through this screen, which coincidentally is also cracked. <laughs> 
So just have a little sympathy for me that I'm going back and forth between the frogs because I can't see otherwise. Did you find something, you? Did that guy just grab one in midair? Did I see that right? No way! This guy might have just grabbed one in midair. <laughs> I hope we got that on camera, that would have been cool. One of the things I love observing is the way in which these animals locomote or move around in their enclosure. You have to consider that this animal spends the majority of its life high up in the rainforest canopies of Peru and surrounding countries. High up in the tree canopy, you can certainly imagine that an animal like this would move very carefully, sliding across leaves, ensuring that there's no chance they'd fall down, which may be the explanation for why this guy's scooting across this pothos leaf. Although it may seem as if they are twerking, what you're witnessing is the froglet lining up its leap towards its prey. It is pretty amusing. When my froglets first emerged from the water, they were extremely shy to ever consider eating on camera. After a few months, I noticed that I was actually able to even shine lights on them and do a bit of tongue feeding with certain individuals or at least get to observe them eating, which has been very rewarding for me as I was very afraid they weren't eating at first. Thankfully, the reassurance I had was finding little poops all over the leaves and glass, which I clean regularly is a clear sign at least that they are eating, so that was a big relief. I like to keep a close eye on everyone and make sure they always look plump. For the smaller frogs, I'll sometimes put some slower injured crickets on a leaf in front of them, and usually within a few minutes in darkness, they eat them once they twitch. And that seems to ensure that all the froglets are eating well. I feed my Cruzio Hylocraspid opus every other day by offering them 1 fourth inch to half inch crickets dusted in Rapashi Calcium Super Plus. Now, one of the things that's been so nice about raising these frogs is that several of my friends purchase these animals at the same time as me. It's been a real testament to the community again, but getting to bounce back experience between one another, share what's been working well for each other, the concerns we've had, and how to remedy them. Unfortunately, I did just notice today that one of the froglets, the newest to emerge from the water actually, has a tiny sore on the top of its head. I don't know how this developed. There's nothing too abrasive in the enclosure with the exception of the screen lid. That is my only guess that maybe they scratch their head on the top of the tank and because amphibians can be particularly sensitive to infection and other things, we're going to nip this in the butt as quickly as we can by using some Silvazorb gel to ensure that the animal does not develop an infection on that little abrasion on its head. Thankfully, it doesn't appear to be open. There's no pink or, you know, tissue exposed under the skin there. And so I'm crossing my fingers that by applying the Silvazorb daily over the wound, it'll just heal on its own and do okay. The froglet seems active and healthy otherwise, but I will keep you guys posted as to how it's doing. Before we end today's video, as always, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. Truly, friends, I'm so appreciative of your support there. Your monthly contributions do so much to help things run so smoothly on the channel. And as you already know, becoming a channel patron unlocks a direct line of communication with me through that platform, a shout out and an upcoming video like so, and a whole skew of perks associated with the different levels of tiers of support you contribute with. There's everything from the $5 and up tiers, getting the handwritten thank you letter. Good luck deciphering my handwriting, but it's a thought that counts, right? I think. There's the discounts on merch, contests, exclusive videos, and the sneak peeks. If you're interested in learning more about how you can become a Reptiliatus patron, there's a link in the video description to get more information. Thank you so much. And with that being said, today's new patrons since last video that we're thanking and giving a shout out to are Landon, 
and Christian. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate your support, and I look forward to getting to know you better on that platform. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video update on my Cruzio Hyla Craspidopus. As you can see, the four froglets are doing amazing. They're growing quickly, and it's sort of bittersweet to see that the last one's out of the water now and joining the rest of its friends. So, with that being said, I want to take a moment to thank you all so much for watching today's video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns in the comment section down below. Don't forget to answer today's question of the day. And if you could do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, it means so much to me and it really does help this video do a lot better. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that people are enjoying the content and it might offer it to other people who might stumble across it and enjoy as well. So, with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I can't wait to see you all soon in another video next week. We have some really cool content coming up. If you're a patron, you know what the other video is going to be about. So, I'll leave it at that for now. Take care, and if you want to see more videos pertaining to the Cruzio Hylocraspidopus, check out the playlist up above. Alright, take care guys. Bye.